Good morning. Good morning, Father. Today we celebrate the feast of the transfiguration of the Lord. So it's the Lord's feast. We have a lot of celebrations honoring the Lord, and this one is the least popular. So when we chose like a background, when we had a retreat, we formed our own retreat house. We built our own retreat house in the Philippines. And we named it after the birthplace of St. Dominic. St. Dominic, whose feast we will celebrate in a few days' time, and actually whose feast we also celebrate today as a feast of the translation of Dominic in August 6, timed precisely because it is the transfiguration of the Lord. So we chose the transfiguration as a backdrop, like the big backdrop for Calaruega, Philippines. So in our chapel in the retreat house, what you will see there right in front of you is not a wall, but really such a big stained glass mosaic featuring the transfiguration of Jesus, uh, bigger than life uh, in mosaic, and on his side, Moses and Elijah. We chose transfiguration, that image, because that is how we understand a retreat. It's a retreat house after all. There was a long story about that. And to cut it short, it's because we were blacklisted from a retreat house before the Dominicans. Blacklisted. Meaning, we could not come back to that retreat house anymore. So we felt as if, of course, uh, since we could not come back, okay, let's build our own retreat house. And there, because we have a different understanding of what a retreat should be. In fact, we have a different understanding of what spiritual life should be. Of what a relationship with Jesus should be. Depending on the gifts of founders. The retreat is an invention, so to speak, a wonderful contribution of St. Ignatius of Loyola to the church. The tradition of uh, our Jesuit brothers, that's not our tradition. So, in other words, we don't have a tradition of retreat. Neither spiritual direction. So we don't believe in, let's say, closing... Uh, no. We don't believe that our doors should always be open so that the superior can enter any time. Like, it's like a military barracks. You're opening your doors. Superior has all the authority and can enter any time. No, we don't have that. So you see how different it is. We should always close our doors. Because the Lord says, when you pray, close your doors and pray to your Father in secret. And the Father who sees what is in secret will reward you. But it's more like believing in the freedom that the, Lord's give, that the Lord gives to the soul. And that freedom is between you and God and no other human being, no other human institution or authority. So if you go on a retreat, you don't have to spend so long for a retreat, like a month. If we just follow what is in our tradition, five days is already long enough. So go, go on a retreat, five days, that's enough. If you can't be changed in five days, you cannot be changed in one month. Do you believe that? So the change that comes from the Lord is actually instantaneous, just like the transfiguration. And yet, the transfiguration is also not a miracle. It is the Lord's way of teaching. Teaching Peter, James, and John, who were with him up that mountain. And was, what was Jesus teaching? The most important components of spiritual life, the law represented by Moses, the prophets 
represented by Elijah. What will change us? You want to change? Listen to the law. You will be changed. Follow the law. You will be changed. Not just any law. Not just the law of the land. It's included. But the law of the Lord. You may be thinking of the Ten Commandments. Of course, yes. That's the objective law. But there is a subjective law. As important as the Ten Commandments. Where is it? We're just talking of the law. Okay, you have the laws, human laws. We have the church laws. You have canon law. You have the Ten Commandments. Those are all objective laws. That's part. That's 50%. There's another important part. Another 50%. And that is the subjective law. Where is it? Where is the subjective norm? As important as all those laws. The law written in your hearts. The Spirit of God working 24-7 to touch you. What does God say to you today at this moment? The moment you close your door and talk to Him. That is the moment. That is conscience. That is the subjective law. That is the other 50%. And that is why it is so important to pay attention to the working of God in the soul. A retreat is so important. Now to program that, that's secondary. How many number of days? That's secondary. Will it be 30? 15? 5? Does not matter. Do I have to tell everything to another person? Such that if I don't, I commit sin. The way we understand it in our religious tradition, we don't. We don't commit sin. We have our own constitutions. We vow. We place our hands in the Constitution to vow. If we violate those constitutions, do we commit a sin? St. Dominic says, and he fought for this, no. I'm proud of St. Dominic. Well, I'm proud to be a son of Dominic. He wrote the laws. We promise there. And when we break our promise, Dominic says, we don't sin. Because we are free men. Under grace. Under grace. So it's not that we're breaking any laws. It's just that Dominic wants us not to be slaves to laws. I see a lot of people who are slaves. Slaves to laws. That's what we actually do not like. Including laws about how to be good before God. I don't have to, any, to open anything up to my spiritual director. In fact, I don't have. And we don't require anyway. We don't require spiritual directors in our seminary. Why? Because the first spiritual director is the Holy Spirit. When you close your door and you pray to God, you can be transformed. End. 
when we live in community, when we live with the brothers, sometimes we have big communities. In the university community, I have 40 brothers with me. Imagine, 40. That's the biggest. That's the biggest community we have. And when we decide, we vote. There should be an absolute majority, meaning 20 plus 1. Here in Surabaya, we are five. So from 40, I live with five, including myself. And when we vote, it's still like that. It's still democratic. Whether 40 or five or three, the rule is the same. Why? Because the spiritual director is the community. And we follow that one, not just the superior, but the community. In other words, my brothers and sisters, the transfiguration, if it is a moment of change, there is a purpose for that change. And the purpose for Jesus showing his glory is not to stop there, not to stop at the wonderful feeling. Like what Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it's so good. Let's just stay here. Let's just build tents. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Let's have a camping here, glamping. Jesus said, let's go down. The gospel ends by them going down. What does it mean? When they were coming down the mountain, they were going to Jerusalem. The glory of the Lord, the glimpse of the glory of the Lord is a preparation for the ignominy of the cross. And we who listen to these stories now, we know more. We know more what will happen. That faced with the ignominy of the cross, Nobody was there. Not Peter. Not James. Only Mary. And yes, John, the best friend. Only real friends. Only best friends. Will really know What's in the heart of Jesus? Only the mother and the best friend were at the foot of the cross. No matter what retreat, no matter what glory, no matter how dazzling Jesus, the magic of Jesus, bedazzled them atop Mount Tabor. The test of Tabor is Calvary. The transfiguration prepares for the crucifixion. Brothers and sisters, today as we encounter the Lord in His transfigured glory, let us pray that we too may be transfigured. First, in the way we understand spiritual life, Most often, in the ritualistic understanding that we have of spiritual life, that we have to do these things, that we have to observe these little laws, that is fine. But that is also for the scribes and the Pharisees. We can be perfect in those, just like the scribes and the Pharisees. But the transfiguration that Jesus is effecting in us is something that can be instantaneous. It's life-changing and it cannot be reversed. It is like a decision to follow the Lord. To follow the Lord not just up to that mountain where He is gloriously, magically transfigured, but up to another mountain in Calvary where there is no more glory, 
No more dazzling clothes, just bones and flesh and blood and death and no magic. When our faith is tested to the point when we shed blood, there is no more clean robes. No more handsome faces, beautiful faces, beautiful words. Where will we be? Will we be at the foot of the cross? Let us pray that this transfiguration may lead us to our own Calvaries so that we will see the Lord's real glory from the perspective of the resurrection when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Let us not end this day the way the disciples, the way the gospel ends the story. They kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. We should know a better ending to this story.